hello um i'm just checking that you can hear me and that it's live Hi, um, I'm Leah, Leah Marshall, and I am an artist from London. I'm so happy that you could all join. It's so nice to be able to do this with you. Um, I'm just going to look at the comments quickly. Sorry, give me a second. I'm just... Um, muting my other device <laughs> hi um andy oh i'm also in the uk hi sheila annette jamie beth hello em hello diana oh it's so nice to see you all um i'm a bit nervous i've never done a live before um, but I'm really excited to be here with you. Um, hi, Diane from California. Oh, that's exciting. Um, but yeah, please feel free to ask me any questions during the painting and please leave any comments. And I'm so happy you're all saying hi. Um, it's so nice to know all your names and where you're from. Calgary, Alberta. Wow. Hi, Lainey. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. That's really nice. <laughs> um, so I'm in London and it's just after five and it is so doom and gloom at the moment. We had really beautiful sunny weather, but at the moment it's just gone back to grey skies. But I hope that you have a nicer, nicer weather where you are. Oh, thank you, Diana. Oh, so nice. You're so lovely. Um, North California. Oh, hey. That's nice, Tracy. Um, so I will be one of the teachers for the 30 Places 30 Days class um, that Sketchy have newly introduced, which is so exciting, and it's starting on the 1st of July. So I'm so excited. I'm really grateful to Sketchy for reaching out and asking me to teach. I'm so honoured to be able to teach in st amongst um, some really lovely artists. Um, in that class, we're going to be going to all different places around the world, and I'm sure you'll be able to pick up some really good tips and tricks from those lessons. Oh, you can barely hear me. Oh, can you turn up the sound? Oh, no. Um, let me quickly speak to Vanessa from Sketchy. Hold on. Sorry, I'm just going to check with Sketchy what I can do for you to hear me a bit better. Oh, and an echo. Oh, okay, um, M can hear me. Oh, and J, okay. Oh, okay, uh, maybe, um, maybe there's a problem. Okay, great. Yeah, maybe maybe turn up your volume a little bit. But let me know if there's an echo or if the volume or if you need me to speak a bit louder, that would be great. Oh, I'm so glad you can all hear me great. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so um, we're going to be going around the world in the 30 Places 30 Days classes. There's so many different amazing places that you'll be able to see and paint. Um, and... You can also use my discount code if you've not already signed up. I wrote it out for you. Um, 30 capital P, 30 capital D, Leah, in lowercase. And you'll be able to get $5 off at the checkout. Okay, great. So, um, if you're ready to start, I am. So, um, I will... 
I won't switch it over just yet. I'll show you a couple of the things you'll need. So if you'll need a palette um, and possibly, if you can, two jars of water. I usually use two because it's good to have one to clean your brushes and the other is to get clean water. I defeat the purpose though because I just use whichever one, but it's good having a lot of water at hand. And then um, gouache of your choice. I use Holbein Artist Gouache. Oh, I'm holding it upside down. Holbein Artist Gouache, but any gouache is fine. Hi, Leandro from Brazil. Wow, Brazil, that's amazing. Um, also, something to tape your paper down. So you could use washi tape, or I use scotch tape because um, it's clear. So when you want to, um, if you want to just check your colour before you lay it down, you can swatch it just on the side, which I'll show you in the painting. Or you can use masking tape, whatever um, works for you. Um, and then a few brushes. So we'll definitely need a flat brush. Oh, okay. I'll speak a bit louder, no problem, and I'll come a bit closer to my laptop. Um, you'll definitely need a flat brush and then just a selection of round brushes. I've got like a size 6, a size 4, a size 2 and then size 0. Those should be fine. And then you'll just need something to just sketch out the um, base of the, the outline of the painting and an eraser. If you might need it. Um, I think that's pretty much everything so I'll switch the camera over. Let me know if you can see it fine and I'll just add the reference photo as well. Let me know if you need the reference photo to be a bit bigger or anything like that. Um, oh I'm glad Canda63, I'm glad you can hear a bit better and hi Samaya from Saudi Arabia, wow <laughs> this is so cool. Um, okay, so we'll start, the oh, I'll show you the colours that we'll use, so we'll need Ultramarine Deep, um, Turquoise Blue, um, Permanent Green Deep, if you haven't got these exact colours, I'll bring them a bit closer, if you haven't got these exact colours, don't worry, you just need something similar, um, this is Emerald Green, Ivory black, lemon yellow, and then white. I am almost finished my white. White is the one colour you use so quickly when it comes to gouache. Um, so I'll just start by um, I'm gonna bring my palette a bit closer so you can see. We'll just put some ultramarine deep. and some turquoise blue um, so you might not be able to see it but I've sketched out really lightly the um, outlines you just want to do basically just a really light line for the fields and then just some just little like it's literally just an outline and a guide like you don't need to worry if you go over it when we paint it's not a problem at all I'm gonna put some white Um, and then we'll just make a bit of water and then I'm going to bring it into the middle so that we've got a nice big space to work with. So at the top it's going to be a bit of a darker blue um, and then it will go down into a lighter blue. So we want to focus on making that top colour first. But just whatever you um, do what you want to do. I feel like we don't always have to exactly copy the reference photo because it's just a reference photo after all. So if you want to make the blue a bit darker or a bit lighter, that is absolutely fine. And then so this is what I meant by you just want to swatch it on your tape so you can just kind of see. I'm going to add a little bit more white. 
a little bit of white, just a little bit. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and take our flat brush. And we're going to go and start. So I personally um, like my gouache to be a bit thinner some people work with it really thick which is absolutely fine but I like it to be a bit thinner because then you can layer sorry my bracelets going against um, the desk and don't worry too much about how the sky looks if it's a bit streaky or anything because it's literally going to be covered by the clouds so I wouldn't even worry about that. I'm going to add a bit more ultramarine because I feel like the colour could be a bit darker. Yeah, that's a bit better. So I'm going to add a bit more turquoise. So we'll keep going and then now I'm going to add some white into where we had the turquoise blue because this colour is a bit, it's not as, um, it's a bit warmer than um, the ultramarine. So we're going to just, and you can just easily blend it any way you want. Oh, you can't hear anything. Oh no. Okay, I'll make it, I'll, let me speak a bit louder. Can, can you hear me now? Sorry about that, Candy 63. Let me know if you can hear me or not, and then I'll um, speak a bit louder, so. So we'll just stop around here. And don't worry if you go a bit into the bushes because we're going to go over them with a nice dark green after anyway. So it's all good. Okay. Okay, Carol, I'm glad you can hear me. Okay. So once your area is all covered, okay, all right, I'll speak louder. Thanks for letting me know, Ray Ann. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to turn my palette a bit um, and we're going to take emerald green. Oh, I'm glad you can hear me, Kristen. Permanent green deep, and then okay. I'll just oh okay. Sorry, I am quite soft spoken naturally. <laughs> sorry about this. I will speak louder, and I've put a bit of ivory black as well, because we're just going to, <clears throat> and we'll keep our same flat brush. Um. And we're going to mix a bit of permanent green deep, a bit of emerald green, and then a bit of black. We don't want it to be too dark, but we want it to still be quite dark because... Oh, great. <laughs> okay, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow as well because... The colour, I don't know if you can see it in the reference picture, but the colour is a little bit warmer than the green that I've made here. I've just lost my reference picture. <laughs> Bear with me for two seconds. Okay. So I'm just going to put some yum and yellow in here. Oh, I'll try it. My, um, my laptop is over there. I'm going to speak louder. 
I hope that will be okay. Um, okay, so a colour similar to this, so I mixed emerald green, <clears throat> permanent green deep and lemon yellow and a bit of black. Oh, oh, thank you Michelle, that's so kind. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Okay, so we're not going to um, go over the whole part of the field, we'll just map out bits, that are, bits um, of the green. So. Just do small strokes. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good to know that um, your pods work a bit better. And then <clears throat> towards the bottom, it's a little bit darker, so we can add a dark, a tiny bit of black and just bring that across. So we're not completely filling it in, we're just adding the bits of green that we can see. And just so that we know exactly where we are with the painting, um, with the field as well. So. Okay, so we can just leave that like that for now. And then we'll take one of our round brushes, any is fine, any size, whatever size you have. And we're going to mix a bit more black in with the green that we just made. Because um, we're going to do those trees in the background. Excuse me, sorry. So we'll just, just little dabbing motions like this is perfect. And don't worry if it blends like that. If you can see on mine, it's starting to blend into what I just put down, but that's fine. It's no biggie at all. And you're just gonna make little dabbing motions because we're just doing a little outline of the grass, the bushes, trees. And then there's a rather big tree just over here. So we're just gonna put that there. Oh, I'm sorry you can't hear, Alan. I'm so sorry. I think apparently it, it um, varies between each person. I'm definitely trying to speak louder. Oh, that's so nice, Kristen. Oh, I've never done a... Oh, yeah. I know I've never done anything like architecture either. It's really good. I'm so excited that you'll be tuning into the class. Oh, thank you, Rat Mammy. I'm so glad you love those trees. The trees, and I mean. So yeah, we're just dotting those trees and then we'll just leave that just like that. Okay. So now we can pretty much leave that now we're going to go on to the interesting bit, which is the clouds. So we want to take a... So I already practiced this piece because I didn't want to do something with you guys that I didn't feel confident in. And when I did it, it took me really long because I used a tiny brush doing each cloud. So we're going to go up of size to a size two rather than... I think I even might have used a zero zero. So it took me a while. Um... Oh, thank you, Kelly. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for being here. It's really lovely um, that you guys have tuned in. I'm so grateful. Um, so, that, so that white has a bit of blue in it, so I'm just going to do a fresh white over here. But we can still use that white later, but just for these clouds, I'm going to... I need to, I need to like keep in mind that I need to speak louder, so sorry. Um, okay, so I put a fresh white over here just because that one's got a bit of a blue hue to it. So we'll just start 
over here in the corner. So I took a number two brush and we want to keep it quite watery because this allows us to um, do more with our clouds. So you don't want, it doesn't, it shouldn't be like water, but we want it to be watery because we don't want it to be too thick because that won't give us the effect that we're looking for. So what you can do as well, what I usually do is just clean off my brush a little bit and then we just add a bit of water just to blend just like that. I don't know. I hope you can see. Oh, actually, you might not be able to see because we're reference photo. I'll just make it a tiny bit smaller for now so that you can just see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, so just add a tiny bit of water and then just around the edges so we can blend out just like that. I hope you can see. Um, yes, it is permanent white. Beth. It is permanent white. And, oh, I know what you mean, Dean. When I first started using gouache, I was so annoyed because I'd seen all these people on Instagram using it and it looked amazing and I just couldn't get the hang around the hang of it. But then I realised I was using it way too thick. As soon as I um, watered it down, it was so much better. But you're welcome. So we're just going to... I'm just going to fill in the areas as much as I can. So we're going to focus on, so it's the, you can't see my iPad, but it's the big clouds on the left. There's a big section of clouds just over here. So that's what we're going to work on first. So you're just going to take your white and you can just dab it, um, dab it through. And then we will add the water after. So we'll leave a little gap just there. Like that. I'm gonna just switch this off so I can easier access the jar I've been using for the white. And then we're just gonna do the same and just take the water and let it blend out. And if you think it's a little bit um, too watery, you can just literally add a few dots of paint on top, just like that. And then it just brightens that area of cloud. Um, so then we're going to carry on down here. And if you want to do your clouds in a different way, go for it. It does not have to look exactly the same as the reference picture. I sometimes even think it looks a bit better when you do your own thing. It makes it more original. Oh my days, also be careful. What I always do is water will be dripping here and then it drops onto my painting. It's so annoying, so when you're taking it off um, out the water, I'd say, be careful, make sure it's like super dry because every it happens to me all the time. And then we've just got a few little sections here, so I'm just going to leave spaces in between. How are you all getting on? Are you all getting on okay? Let me know if you need me to explain anything, or if there's anything I've not been clear about, please let me know. And then 
with this little section because we can use a bigger brush to fill that in later so I'm going to leave that there. And gosh. Hi Tracy. Oh so um, a difference between gouache and watercolours is that gouache is a lot more opaque than um, watercolour. It's a lot more opaque even if you use it in a watery consistency like I am it's still so much more opaque than watercolour ever would be. I always think of it as a mix between um, acrylic and watercolour like if you put those two paints together I think you would get gouache. I hope that's answered your question okay. Oh thank you Sheila I'm so glad you love it you're loving it. You just fill in those little light bits just in the middle. You just fill those in and then it just adds some more a bit of texture to your clouds. So we're just over. We're into like, we're on the second little lot of clouds now. Because there's like a little gap. I don't, you should be able to see on your reference picture. There's like a gap that kind of goes like this. So we're just working on the next lot just here. No. Oh, that's okay, Tracy. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So bear with me, I might add something on if it comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Um, You can definitely use a sponge. That would probably give a really cool effect as well. So yeah, go for it. Oh my days, I'd love to see your painting if you use a sponge. I'd love to see um how it will turn out. So please make sure you upload it to Sketchy. It's a lot of patience doing these clouds. Even when I was doing them before, I was just like, oh my days, this is gonna take a while, but patience is good. Okay. I'm just gonna go into the lower section now. And if it's still looking a little bit watery, don't worry, because what we're going to do after is we're going to go in and um, we're going to go in and add like thicker white because this is quite, um, it's quite watery. So later on, once we've finished and all of these underlayers are dry, we're going to go on top with a thicker white and we're going to really make these clouds stand out. So don't worry at all if they're looking a little bit thin right now because it will just help us to make an even better cloud towards the end. So these, the areas at the bottom over here and these ones will use a flat brush and that will will be able to cover more area but for these clouds I think a round brush is a bit better because you can get the shape of them a little bit more. Flat brushes are so good, but you can't make as many shapes as you can with them. Or like, um, yeah, I guess shapes. You can't make as many shapes with them as you would with a round brush.
So we're just doing this like little middle section now um, of cloud. I can't believe it's been 30 minutes already, that's gone so quick. Okay. Time really flies when you're painting. Recently um, on my Instagram, I tried to do a series of paintings in only two hours and it was literally like a race against time. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I was just like completely under pressure. But it was good because it encourages you to not focus too much on the details and just get the main parts of the painting um, down on the paper before you then add the details at the end. So it was they were good. It was a good exercise and a good try. Um, I'm just going to fill in that these clouds over here. And you can even kind of do like little blobs just like that and then get your water after and blend them. And that way it's a bit looser and you can kind of just can see what happens. I think it's more fun to paint that way rather than it being super structured. Oh, my IG. Um, I think Vanessa from Sketchy might post it in the comments. Um, but if not, I can't even remember because it's got some. It's got a full stop in it and an under an underscore. And I, right now, I can't even remember where they go. Um, yeah, I think Vanessa will tag it. But thank you for being interested in my Instagram, Beth. Oh, thank you so much, Vanessa. So we'll just do those watery clouds here at the top. And you'll just be free with your brush. Wherever you want to put a cloud, you put a cloud. It makes me think of Bob Ross and his happy little trees that he would just add in wherever he felt. Add in a cloud wherever you feel. So the clouds over here are a bit more, they're a bit, they're not as white, they're more faded. So if we can use more watery white up here. Running out of this white so quickly. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Oh, so um, don't worry about that wrap, Manny, because we'll go over them again. Um, honestly, like however your clothes, your your clouds turn out this time, it's fine because we're going to go over them again just to make them a bit brighter. Oh, I did. <laughs> oh, great minds think alike, Rat Mummy. Uh. 
and okay. So we'll just add in these ones over here. So to rather than you spending oh I was wondering if the colours fade as they dry. Um if you've used a lot of water then yeah. But with um oh another oh Tracy asked earlier the difference with gouache. Another difference I just remembered which is really important is that um gouache dries so a darker colour in gouache will dry lighter and a lighter colour will dry darker so when you put your colours down um, you want to always keep in mind that they may be a little bit lighter or a little bit darker than you expect no problem but yeah so no they don't fade just if they're watery yeah um, I think the reference photos are actually in the description box or the description um, for this video it should be there I think so you should be able to see it there And then we'll just focus on this last section, like in the middle here, and then we can go on to the fraud. So we're almost done with these clouds. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Lucy. We're almost done with these clouds until we do the second layer, but we're almost done with them in the sense of the first layer is almost done. No, I love fluffy clouds, Em. Oh, me and you both, Tracy. <laughs> me and you both. This is so nice. I'm so happy that you're all here. It's really nice to be able to paint with you. Okay. So I'm just going to do a few more bits over here. And then we can kind of just leave those to dry and we can work on our field while this dries basically. So, yeah. Because what we'll do is we'll use the flat brush to just, because these bits are more, you can use more of a sweeping motion. So we'll use the flat brush for that bit. So now we can pick up a bigger brush, a size 4 or a size 6, whatever you like. And we're just going to, I still have some yemen, yemen, lemon yellow from before. So I'm going to put a little bit more because that one's got a bit of a tinge of green. Um, and we're just going to basically fill in the gaps that we left.
and don't worry if it bleeds into each other a little bit because that's just all part of it. I don't know about you, but I love how bright this yellow is. I think it's so pretty. I'm going to just leave this section because we'll individually fill those in. So I'm going to add a darker green just at that bit. So I'll take some of the permanent green and then we can use some of that yellow from before. And we just just dot it in like this and then we'll go over with yellow um, and dot in the flowers like these flowers a bit more individually and I'll even show you a brush that you can use if you want it to go a bit quicker um, does the gouache? Yes, it does. It does reactivate. It does. Which is like a good and bad thing because if you did a... Sp yeah, it does. Um, on the paper. If you wanted to fix a mistake, then... It does. So, so if you wanted to fix a mistake, um, then the water reactivating it can probably help but if not it's a bit of a pain um does the size of the brush matter or is it how you do it so um, i think it's a bit of both i don't think the size i think the size does matter if you're doing tiny details but i think at the same time you can definitely use um a bigger brush and still get good effects so I think, yeah, hmm. I think it's a bit of both, um, Dick, I think it's a bit of both. But with um, round brushes, it's, they're not too hard to manoeuvre, they're pretty good. It's when you use maybe like angled brushes and things like that, that that's maybe when the size of the brush would count a bit more. So I've just been mixing um, emerald green, yellow, and black, and just to make oh, just to make um, this. It's a bit of like a more of a yellowy green rather than um, a more a green with a bluey hue. Just um, to fill in those bits of where the grass would be. I want to keep the field looking quite simple because where the clouds will stand out so I don't want the field to look too complex so that's why I'm personally just filling it in quite loosely but if you want to make it a bit more detailed then go for it. And all that water, all um, the bleed, like, don't worry about that. It's fine. Absolutely fine. I always, I actually sometimes like how it bleeds. I think it makes it a bit prettier at times. Oh, 
Oh. I don't think so. Do you want me to? Is that better? Tracy, let me know. Okay. So I'm going to leave that field like that. And now we can go back to... Actually, what we'll do is we'll focus on these trees in the back. So just, I always try and just use um, the colours that we already have rather than adding more. Um, and it helps me not to waste paint as well. So we'll start over here and we'll just make little dabbing motions just to add a bit of texture to these bushes in the back. I think that colour's good. Over here it's a bit darker so I'm going to just leave that there for now and just leave um, fill in these bits over here. Okay, oh, I'm glad it's better. So now, okay, now we'll take our, I need to add a bit more white, I don't know about you. basically the clouds that all will rest over here so I'll start on this side and we'll just do light sweeping motions like this because these clouds aren't as fluffy as M said than the other ones so you can be a lot looser here like that and then over here same thing you can be a bit looser And just be a little bit careful of the bush because it might mix. Um, so I'm going to leave um, the bits near the bush. I'm going to just leave those until I know it's definitely dry. Um, because I don't think that would be a cute colour. And so now we can go in and make our clouds brighter. So this time when you mix your white, you want it to be a bit thicker. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't need to be like super thick, but you just want it to be a bit thicker because you're just going to drop it in, just literally dot it in this bit's still wet so that's why it looks a bit like that but you're going to just dot it in like that and then it just automatically brightens up the clouds so much more And if you still want to like add a bit of a blended effect, you can then like wash your brush off and do the exact same technique that we did before. So if you want to make it a bit more blended, that's what you can do. 
And then you can go back down into these um, clouds that we just did and just add in brush hair. You can add um, more white onto them, brighten them up as well, because these clouds all in this area are really bright. It's more the ones at the top that aren't so bright. Already it's making such a difference, just adding that extra layer of white. The clouds don't look as washed out. With these ones, because they are a bit, they are a bit more faded. Um, I'm gonna just add white in certain areas, but then just leave, um, leave some of these faded bits because I think it it adds a nice effect when it's not all super bright. So, but if you want them all to be bright, go for it. Or let me know how you're doing or if um, there's anything I can explain a bit better let me know I hope it's been easy to follow um, and I've not made it a bit complex or like made it seem hard or anything let me know sometimes I just think that um sometimes before um, I got approached um, by sketchy I it's made me realize how backwards I paint sometimes like I just kind of do whatever but it's actually been so good like um, working with sketchy because it's actually made me think about think more about um the way in which I do things and the order sometimes my order just didn't make any sense like <laughs> I'll be going like back and forth over and over the same area when it was not necessary because I could have done it a different way so it's actually been really, really great teaching with Sketchy. It's benefited me more than I ever thought it would have. Okay, I'm going to add a bit more white because I'm running out again. So as you can see, like the clouds are already so much brighter because we've just added on that second layer. Um, and then pretty much after we've done these clouds, we'll have a bit of um darker areas on this foliage and then the flowers at the front and then we'll be done this has been so fun i'm so happy i've been able to do this with you Oh, thank you, Tracy.
going, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, we're just going up higher to this, to where we started. Oh, Jamie, you have to show me yours on the sketchy live. I'm sure it looks much better than just okay. But thank you. Thank you so much. And oh, thank you, Rat Mummy. I try, I try and match them as well as I can. Sometimes I can get a little bit off. Um, but yeah, I tried to match it as, as well as I could. Colour matching is actually a lot harder than um, than I anticipated it to be when I first started painting. <clears throat> but gouache is really good for landscapes because you can get that opacity when you're painting. So, it's really good. Oh, I'm so happy you enjoyed it, Sheila. Thank you so much for joining. And you're so welcome. Oh yeah, um, what um, <clears throat> Vanessa just posted, um, I please tag me um, if you've seen my Instagram, please tag me in your paintings and I will most definitely feature them on my Instagram story because it's just such an amazing concept that um, you'd want to um, paint with me. So I'd love to feature any paintings that anyone has done. Okay. Show. Oh, you're welcome, Diana. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so, so much for joining. Okay, I think that I am pretty much done with these clouds now. I'm just going to add a few little wispy bit. Oh, gosh, I almost touched the green there. Some wispy bits in. Just like that. And then, yeah, I think we're done. Yes, Rayan. I've not personally done it, but I know a lot of people mix the two, so they'll maybe use watercolour as their base and then go on top with gouache. I think I'd like to try it one day, um, but I just haven't yet, but I think definitely give it a try. Oh, thank you, Jay. I'm so happy um, that you enjoyed it. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, it's gone so quick. I can't believe um, it's been an hour. We're almost done. And if um, I start heavily going over time, I'll just finish it and then upload it to the sketchy... I think it's to the sketchy art school. Um, so you'll be able to see it there. But I think we should finish in the next 10 minutes.
for this area, oh sorry I didn't explain, I put some more um, black in this area and I'm just basically adding in texture. Oh thank you Serena. Um, Oh, Diana, you mix watercolour and gouache. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. Oh, that's really interesting to know. Thank you for sharing that, Diana. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm just going to add that same dark colour over here. Just like that, and then I think we're done with those trees. And then now, what we'll do is... We'll get a bit more yellow. And I'm going to mix a tiny bit of white with it because this will just help it to stand out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go in and just dot around of flowers just like that just a small dot dotting motion wherever you want to put them I'm going to focus basically just on this area um, but you can put them in wherever you like oh what I said before as well if you wanted to, oh sorry, if you wanted to really speed up the process, you could possibly use this kind of brush, which is a fan brush. I'll try and demonstrate it. I don't use it too often, but I just have one in case I want to, but you could just, you could do it more like that, if that makes sense. And then that just kind of speeds up the process for you. I prefer to dab it on individually, but if you want to speed up your process, always use the brush like that the fan brush like that That's great, Diana. I'm so excited to see it. Watercolour and white gouache. So I've, I've seen um, a lot of people use white gouache for their highlights as well. I follow a few like um, people on Instagram who paint food. And they'll do the food in um, watercolour. But then they'll do like any highlights or shine using white gouache. So no, it's really, it's a really great way of doing it. There are a lot of flowers here. <laughs> so just slowly making my way from left to right. If I don't really finish in the next three minutes, then I will continue. I'll say goodbye and then continue and upload it to the Sketchy Live group because there's not really much else I'm going to add. 
I'll just maybe go over um, some of the green areas with a bit of a darker green just to add a bit of depth but other than that I'm not going to do too much more so Thanks. Okay, I think I'll leave it here, but I'll basically just show you. So I will do some more flowers just over here, a little bit over here, and that'll pretty much be it. And then just fill in the darker areas with a, um, these green areas with a bit of a darker green just to add a bit of depth. Um, thank you so, so much for coming to my live and thank you for being so lovely as well with my first one um it's been such a lovely experience and i'm really grateful that i've been able to do this with you today um thank you so so much and i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it was easy to understand and that i explained it well um but yeah thank you so much i'm so so happy that you all joined um yeah so speak soon and thank you so much goodbye Oh, thank you.